Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. If you've got mono gnats, let's turn mono into super wide stereo. All right, shout out goes to Craig Wendler for bringing this to me. Uh, he was challenged with trying to make gnats, which are natural tracks, that's uh, the ambience, the natural world that we hear around us, trying to make them sound wide. And he, he was given mono clips. And I'll just play you these mono clips uh, examples of. These aren't the ones he used, but I just made some mono versions of these clips. So if we play them back, and and hopefully you're listening on headphones or good speakers, and you'll hear that this is right in the middle. Another one. So yes, they sound like a natural environment, that they don't sound like what we would hear if we were in a natural environment hearing with both ears. When we hear something in a natural environment, we're hearing the initial sound and the reflection of the sound in the environment, which is the trees or the buildings or whatever. And that natural spatial sound gives us a certain feeling of, of space, and it does really help uh, the scene. So it's pretty simple. All you have to do is this. Let's listen to these instead. And the next one. So now it sounds like a natural reverberation of a, a, a original, a real environment. So all I had to do was this. Let me just open this up. And you'll see that I have two versions of the exact same mono clip. So you drag that in twice. And these are mono tracks. And if you drag these in, it, it doesn't make a mono track. It actually makes a standard track. I just prefer, maybe it's because I, I worked a lot with broadcast folks. Um, I like to make these as mono tracks and then pan them. So if you right click and choose add tracks, make zero video tracks, but you can make two at the beginning. So you make two mono tracks. You drag the clip in twice and then grab your audio track mixer and you pan each one of these, one left and one right. So let's just listen to the left. Oh, actually I have a something there I'll talk about in a second. And the other side. Okay, so when you have them both, because you've panned these, so I'll play I'll pan these while you're listening to them. And when they're both in the center, it does what mono does. It's crept in the center. But if we drag those out, but we have to do one other thing, and that shift one of the clips in the timeline. So if we zoom in, you can see there's the original clip, and I've moved it over to there. If I put it back, it really doesn't add that, that spatial sound. But if you offset that, and how far you offset that is completely up to you. If you put them, let's do it on the last one here. I'll move these away so we've got some room and I'll line them up. So right now, they're exactly at the same start time. And what happens is the sound waves, Who, if we zoom in and look, 
by the way, we can turn on show audio time units, which means we can zoom all the way down and look at the actual waves themselves. And you look at the waves, the waves are going up and they're going down. When you just copy the same clip, then the waves, one wave is going that way, they happen at the same time. And there's a problem with call, something called phasing. Um, and that's because one will cancel the other one out. But if you offset one, then the wave going up and the wave going up, they're not going to be in phase. They'll be, um, they'll be offset. So let me go back and turn that off just so we've got that. Okay, so I'll select the bottom one, hold Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, and I'll hit the right arrow and I'll move it one frame. And you see it move. So you can audition, play this, and move it and hear it. Remember, we're panned left and right. See, one frame and it sounds different. Let's go back. And I think if you move it too far, it sounds more artificial because the space from that bird going cheep, 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 it's too far away. Now it seems to blend in, but because we're panned, it's wrapping itself around. Now I wanna show you one other thing that I did here. If you click in the top of the track mixer, not the clip mixer, if you've got the clip mixer open, it won't work. In the track mixer, twirl this down, click here, and you can create a stereo sub mix. And what's happening is, the, the sub mix is I'm turning this but this dial up and I'm sending the signal over to a stereo sub mix and then I've added a reverb convolution reverb up here and this is a hundred percent mix a hundred percent room size and what happens is the two natural sounds that are panned left and right go into the stereo mix and then they start swirling around with this reverb and they sound even more natural. But you turn this down, so I'll close this up a little bit. You don't turn this all the way up because it can sound very unnatural. Just give it a bit. If I push that too far, it's almost like it brings the stuff back into the center. So I just wanna give it some. So you don't have to do that. I mean, just dropping in two mono tracks and panning them left and right, and then offsetting one is gonna sound fine. It's just, I always like to take things up on another level. So if you add a little bit of reverb on top of that in a sub mix and then turn it down a little bit. And uh, now you've turned this very restrictive mono track into what I call super wide stereo. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us some more? You can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop where you can donate once monthly, any amount, we love our wonderful donors and they help us uh, keep going here on Video Reveal. 
Until next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to the uh, people who reach out to me from the Video Revealed website. There's a contact page there. Uh, it's my job to listen to the folks that reach out to me and create solutions for them and turn into tutorials for you.